Hey crew, I've got the key to that 2022 Ram Power Wagon. I feel like you want to say it with more power. We are going to take it for a drive, but first let's check out how it looks on the inside and outside. The only real changes for 22 are noted inside, so the exterior remains the same, meaning we have this classic vertically slotted blacked out grille around Ram lettering. With the level three equipment group, we get LED projector headlights and DRLs. LED fog lights are down low, baked into the powder coated black front and rear bumpers. We see two recovery hooks and a worn 12,000 pound winch. Steel skid plates are under here. And up high, we've got black decals on the hood. This one is painted in hydro blue pearl. Guys know we'll love a good blue paint job. This one has metallic flake on the surface. 2500 HD and Hemi badges are here. Dropping it down to see the off-road package's 17-inch beadlock capable wheels wrapped up in Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack 33-inch all-terrain tires. With those taller tires and with the taller springs, the Power Wagon has two extra inches of ground clearance compared to the standard truck. See that two-tone paint job with the black there? And then also with the off-road package, we get these rock sliders with integrated step-ups, like mini step-ups. Extended tow mirrors are here too. Stepping back to look at the profile, See that power wagon decal on the side? And this, <laughs> this truck is huge. It's a massive truck. It's so big that it makes the 33 inch tires look small. And I know something like 35 inch tires would dramatically affect how the power wagon performs, but they'd be more aesthetically fitting. The power wagon is only offered in the crew max configuration with the six foot four inch bed. That takes us here to the rear where we find LED tail lights, ram lettering on the power dampened tailgate, hit that button once it comes down. With the bed utility group, we have a spray and bed liner, lots of tie down points, LED bed lighting, and a 400 watt AC outlet over here. That's all underneath this optional tonneau cover. Hooked up to the hitch receiver, the power wagon can pull 10,500 pounds. It's not class leading among these off-road oriented HD trucks, but it's still good. Bed step here with the bed utility group, and it's very necessary because of how tall this truck is. All told, the Power Wagon is quite the sight, and knowing that this nameplate has been around since the 1940s makes it that much more special to me. Let's now look at the interior. Opening up and looking inside at this black interior with perforated leather seating surfaces, contrast ditching and piping, rear seat heating is an option. You can lift up the seat bottoms and pull out this contraption to give yourselves a fully flat floor all the way across. You can lift up this piece here for additional storage. Under that seat bottom, we have the Harman Kardon sub for the 17 speaker sound system. Stitched leather on the doors, gloss trim, power but not one touch windows, harder plastics down low, a couple cubbies, and then with these steps and your grab handles, it's not too hard to get in. Behind my own seat at six feet tall, I've got sort of acceptable knee room. The seat backs are on leather. There are good sized foot pockets. So the seat bottoms come out enough to give me thigh support. And I do have headroom. There are two cup holders here, air vents, four USB ports, two A to C, an AC outlet here, two more cup holders there and two additional from the armrest that comes down. If you do need to use the middle seat, that drive shaft hump becomes an issue, perches my knees up high, and then my head is now scraping against the roof. There are plenty of amenities back here, but I kind of expected a little more space. Also, these comically large headrests make visibility from back here pretty tough. While we're on a roll, would also love to see a sunroof. Let's check out the front. Door closed noise. Little pop to it. Smart keyless entry for the front two doors. These front chairs are heated and ventilated. They've got power wagon embossed on them. There are power adjustments, ram carpeted floor mats, power adjusting foot pedals via this button. Then you've got manual tilt and no telescope adjustment at all for the wheel. Two position memory for the front seats, power one touch windows for the front two windows, power adjusting and power folding door mirrors, LED light on the door mirrors, same material quality on the doors as the second row with the steps and the grab handles. Like the back, it's pretty easy to get in. We'll put it in accessory mode here to turn on the two screens. You've got your digital TFT display, 
sandwiched between some analog gauges. There is no head-up display, but you do have stitched leather up here as well. Additional storage and a DC outlet. Digital rear view mirror with the safety group. There's a Ram Power Wagon plaque on that side with all your specs. You can open up this storage bin here. Then you've got more stitched leather above the glove box. We have, with the Level 3 group, a 12-inch touchscreen infotainment running the Uconnect 5 system. That's a change for 2022, and it is quite responsive. It has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You get a physical volume knob and tuner, trailer brake controller, and a two-speed transfer case adjustment with front and rear locking differentials and a sway bar disconnect. Four more USB ports, 2A, 2C, slot for your phone, AC outlet, loads of storage in this reconfigurable console area, leather padded armrest that says Power Wagon on it, open it up for a USB port or more storage. Hit this button here to open your power sliding rear glass. Visibility is sort of par for the course among these heavy duty trucks. You'll be thankful basically for blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic with the safety group. The tech is good. More importantly, the material quality feels luxurious. There's just not as much passenger space as I was expecting. Let's take the power wagon out for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. It's kind of funny, the power wagon graphic that appears on the TFT display does a little shake to it when the vehicle starts up, which is exactly what's happening when the 6.4 liter Hemi V8 wakes up, gives a quake to the chassis. Got our digital rear view mirror going. There are no drive modes to choose from in the power wagon, so to get moving, you just click the dial over to reverse. You can see we're in two wheel drive, parking sensors, they work just fine. We've got a myriad of camera angles here, including a narrower view, wide angle view that kind of cuts off the top of the camera, front view, wide, front view, narrow, and then you've got some views of your bed, which looks like it's not there because we've got the tonneau cover on it, and your hitch, and your side views. So let's back on out of here. Dial over to drive. We'll begin with a turning radius test for that. Make sure I've got the front facing camera queued up. And uh, I'm starting out wide. We're going to see what happens. Cranking the wheel. Predictably, we took up most of this wide alley here, but we made the turn. If you've got to do U-turns in the power wagon, swing wide. Let's listen to that turn signal one more time. Sounds just like other Stellantis vehicles. Who'd have thunk? And we can do the world famous horn test. Peaky! It's an alert horn. Powertrain in the power wagon. We've got a 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that makes 410 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque. It is the only engine option in this vehicle, unlike other Ram 2500 HD trucks, which are offered with Cummins turbo diesel motors, the most potent of which makes 400 horsepower and 1,070 pound-feet of torque. It's a bit of a bummer that you can't get either of the turbo diesels in the power wagon, especially because turbo diesels have all of that low end torque that's perfect for getting you out of 
obstacles off-road. But Ram says that if they put those motors in this truck, it would add a thousand pounds to the nose, which would seriously compromise off-road capability. This 6.4 liter V8 is plenty potent. It's a smooth engine around town, mated to an eight-speed automatic gearbox. Gently flows through those gear changes. In the background, the brake pedal. Quite easy to modulate, actually. You can creep up to a stop, throttle response. Also easy to meter out. You can feel the first couple gear changes there. Ride quality. Typical for a solid axle vehicle, it's busy. There's like a jitteriness, almost like the uh, power wagon had a little too much coffee this morning. But that's par for the course. What I do appreciate about this truck though, is that the Bill Stein dampers and the coil springs front and rear do a good job of insulating the chassis from bumps. It doesn't crash quite as much as I feel like I remember the F-250 Tremor did. These seats are on the firmer side in terms of padding, but the seating position is comfortable. I've got good spots to kind of throw my arms and coast along. So I'll say that the ride quality in the power wagon is more on the comfort end of the spectrum for an HD truck. We can see about zero to 60 performance next. I'll throw up my race box and we'll have a go at it. Again, without any drive modes to choose, I'm just going to lay on the throttle when the light goes green. There is 60 in 8.25 seconds. Almost precisely what other independent tests are seeing from this truck. And that is on the higher end of the off-road oriented HD segment. And the reason I didn't brake boost it back there is because I've tried that and the rear tires just spin, which is fun, but not as fast. Now, even though it's on the slower end of the spectrum, doesn't mean that it feels slow. A little over eight seconds for 7,300 pounds of truck ain't bad. And the mid-range, is peppy. I also love the sound of that Hemi V8. It wails at you. <laughs> it is a good noise. And when you back off, what you do here is some hum from those all-terrain tires. But you definitely don't hear a lot of that V8 noise. And part of that is because this cabin is so well insulated. It is fairly quiet despite being so big, hulking, and non-aerodynamic. So that means that when you get over the jittery chassis, you can cruise comfortably in the power wagon. Next up will be a braking test from 60 miles per hour. Keeping reasonable expectations here. All right, the stopping distance was good. A lot of weight in motion. The brake pedal kind of eased off on me. I didn't like that. And what I was most impressed with was that there was not a ton of nosedive, despite a lot of the weight of this truck being up so high with that off-road suspension, it didn't just kind of tilt down. So I felt very confident in those brakes. Know that you're driving a heavy duty truck. Give yourself the, mar the margin for stopping distance needed and the Ram Power Wagon's gonna take care of you. Next up, 
we need to tap into some of the off-road capability of this truck. It is designed for those kind of things, so uh, let's change the scenery and get to it. That is more like it. I've taken some air out of the tires to give us a bit more of a cushion here off-road, and later on to let the sidewalls really dig in and claw up some obstacles. I'm going to bring up the off-road pages now, which allows you to see the locking differentials in play and what position in the two-speed transfer case you're in. We've got some accessory gauges, your pitch and roll angle, and the front-facing camera, which will stay on while you're in motion. So with that, let's move into four-wheel drive high. Not that it's totally necessary on this fire row, but it will give us a bit of extra sure-footedness. We'll keep the axles unlocked, throw it in drive, and head away. To recap on some of our off-road hardware here, we have those 33-inch all-terrain tires. We've got the Bilstein dampers and taller coils, the combination giving us 14.2 inches of ground clearance, which certainly for what we're gonna be doing here will be plenty. And the Power Wagon has decent approach and departure angles. The break over angle of 22 degrees is probably the biggest holdup. You've got a long distance between the two axles. And so I think that the rock sliders that are available from the factory that we have equipped here should really be mandatory if you're going to be taking this thing off-road. That or get yourself a set of aftermarket ones. Additional stuff in the power wagon. We've got a beefier rear axle and 410 gears. And that really is going to help, especially for some of the low-speed crawling and the power wagon in its full range low setting of the two-speed transfer case has a much improved call, crawl ratio. And this is the only vehicle in the heavy duty off-road truck segment with a disconnecting front sway bar. That gives it 26 inches of independent wheel articulation at the front axle. We'll dive more into that later for now. The suspension is well damped over bumps, but the stiffer ladder frame chassis, when moving side to side over things, does throw you in the seat and stays pretty firm. Moving over big dips, this truck is confident. All the extra play in the steering that you don't love on the road because it means you're having to stay active with the wheel to keep the truck in the center of lanes makes for a nice margin here off-road. You can turn the wheel without it jutting the axle in one direction or the other. The 6.4 liter Hemi is just as smooth an operator off-road as it is on-road. The truck isn't tremendously wide So you can snake between the trees and brush a bit better than this truck's stable mate, the Ram TRX. The seats, which were firm on road, but fairly comfortable, don't quite have the bolstering to keep you tight in them that I feel like would be needed here on road, off road. See how we do as the pace builds.
harder hit there. Took it flawlessly. Suspension stays perfectly compliant. Not having any drive modes is a little frustrating because you'd like peppier throttle response in certain situations and having that be something you could calibrate with the ECU, ECU would be pretty nice. Alas, it's just up to your right foot. Yeah, this truck's good at speed. All right, now let's flex some different muscles. We're gonna switch into four-wheel drive low. I'll go into neutral and hit the four-wheel drive low button. The shift will take care of itself. And then I can go back into drive. I'm then going to disconnect the front sway bar, which to actually complete requires you to roll forward just a little bit. Now we've got as much articulation as possible and we've got the much improved crawl ratio. So over these whoops here, you can just feel that tire drop down, sink down in and touch the ground to allow us to have traction and to not bottom out over those dips. Next up, we're gonna better utilize that 2.64 to one crawl ratio on a steep incline added to by front and rear locked differentials. So you hit that button there, they're gonna lock on up, and then I'm also gonna bring up the forward facing camera system and see if I can't maneuver into a face-on position, which if you're new to off-roading, you don't want to go up a hill at an angle. All set there, into drive. And let's see how we do. Extremely easy to breeze into the throttle, just airing on it just lightly, letting those tires grip in A little more power needed, given the lock differentials mitigating any wheel spin and that crawl ratio proving phenomenal for coasting up a very steep little incline, incline right there. Last up among the Power Wagon's off-road goodies to show is hill descent control. And I'm very thankful for that front facing camera right now because I can't see out over the hood. So I'll hit this tab here that activates hill descent control, and then using the gear selection buttons here on the wheel, I can move in 0.6 mile per hour increments up or down. So right now, when I take my foot off the brake, we're gonna creep down this hill at 0.6 miles per hour. It doesn't sound like much. But on this kind of an incline, you're thankful that you can move this slowly. Perfect. And I didn't have to worry about my own control of the throttle or brake, which if done improperly could lead to some slip and then you start sliding down a hill. Okay, now the axles are unlocked. I'm back in four wheel drive high. The sway bar in the front is reconnected and we can recap. As is probably clear, that little exercise back there or series of exercises, we're not pushing the limits of what the power wagon can do from a technical standpoint. But they were enough for me to see that the low speed limits of this truck from a crawling standpoint, articulation standpoint, and what I didn't see, the water fording capability of 30 inches are excellent. 
this is a much more technically capable truck than something like a Ford F-150 Raptor or Ram TRX. Those trucks are meant for high speed running in the desert. They can handle jumps far better than this kind of vehicle. But when it comes to low speed, you're gonna love the crawl ratio of something like the Power Wagon. Now it's time to talk about pricing and competition for this vehicle. The starting figure for the 22 Ram 2500 Power Wagon is $64,410. This one is tested, pretty fully loaded, is $72,275. The fuel economy I haven't shared yet is 12 in the city, 18 on the highway, and 15 combined. Now that doesn't sound amazing, but it is yet still the best in the segment of off-road heavy duty trucks. There aren't many of them. So I will list two. The Ford F-250 Super Duty Tremor, I'll say Lariat trim with the 7.3 liter V8 engine. That one starts around $54,000, but I will say that that truck in the same trim with the same engine loaded up that I drove recently with $67,000. So as you add options, the price difference shrinks. It makes 430 horsepower. It gets to 60 in seven and a half seconds. The fuel economy is 14 combined and the towing capacity is about 4,500 pounds more than this at 15,000 pounds. Another one to consider would be the GMC Sierra 2500 HD AT4 with the V8. That one starts at around $66,000, making it more expensive than this. It makes 401 horsepower, it gets to 60 in a quick 6.8 seconds. And while I'm talking, I'm gonna activate the adaptive cruise control with the lane keep assist system. I'm gonna showcase that. The fuel economy for that one is just 13 combined, and the towing capacity is 14,500 pounds. Among those vehicles, I find that the F-250 Super Duty Tremor is the coolest looking. I like its blocky design. It just works for me. I think that the Power Wagon and Sierra AT4 are about the same in terms of exterior styling below that Super Duty. Interior, this is segment leading. Just the material qualities, the layout, it looks expensive. Ride quality, though I did have a couple complaints in terms of busyness of the chassis, that is just across the board among heavy duty trucks. Off-road, the side-to-side -side movements were firmer, but the ride quality otherwise was, I'm gonna say, the best in the set. You cannot get the 2500 Power Wagon with the diesel engine. You can in both of the other two trucks I mentioned, and the towing capacity is the weakest in the segment by at least 4,000 pounds. If you have a pressing need for high towing capacity above 10,500 pounds, and if you're not going to do anything super technical where you'd need the disconnecting front sway bar, I'd probably vote for the F-250 Super Duty Tremor. But if you want the nicest cabin in the segment, and if you have any inkling of doing technical off-roading, this power wagon is my pick. I feel like the price point is well validated by the cabin and by the ride quality. If you want to see this truck driven at night, watch my PV Night Drive. You can also hear the Harman Kardon sound system, and you won't have to hear me blithering on about all the specifications. I hope you guys have enjoyed this PV Drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified, and I'll see you next time.